Welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to another video build series. So this video build series is going to cover the 24th scale Hasegawa Subaru Legacy RS uh, which did an inbox review of a while ago. Uh, been in progress for a while. Finally making some traction on it so I thought it's about time to put together part one. Got part one of the video out there uh, as probably most of the way through what would be part two as well in terms of build so probably good timing to do it uh, and it's been a few weeks since the video has been out there so uh, it was time to get this one done so yeah so this is the uh, Hasegawa Subaru Legacy so uh, the box scheme is sponsored by LNX uh, I think it's one from yeah, it's from an RIC Rally 93. Uh, however, I'm not going with the box scheme. Uh, if you watch my bench updates, you'll know I spoke about it a while back. And in the bench review as well, uh, I'm going to be doing it in the Subaru 555 scheme uh, from New Zealand Rally 93, uh, which was Subaru's first WRC victory uh, ever. You know, not not just with the legacy but their first win ever and it was the first win for colin mccray as well and that's that's the car i'm going to uh to do uh so yeah so as is usual kind of sit back relax enjoy the show hopefully uh so if you're new here don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like the video uh if you've been here before of course don't forget to like the video and of course for everyone out there comments are always welcome uh feel free to leave one after you've watched the video uh so yes yeah, so thank you all for coming back welcome to the new viewers of course sit back relax grab a cup of tea have a biscuit whatever you want sit back and enjoy i'm going to shut up now let's get on over to the bench and see how this build progresses so let's get going uh so first first port of call for today is the instructions uh, so I'm going to go through the instructions and identify all the parts that need to be painted in body color. Uh, so in this case, the body is fairly simple. There's no spoilers. There's no real add-ons. Bumpers are molded integrally. Uh, but in addition to the body, uh, the chassis needs to be painted in body color. Uh, so that's getting removed from the sprue on screen as I speak. Uh, and also in body color will be the interior tub and the roll cage as well and there's a few other small bits and pieces uh, so all those items are going to get removed from the sprue cleaned up uh, here i'm cleaning up the the chassis using a file uh, it's a good way to remove any of the uh, sprue attachment points it seems to work very well on this hasagawa plastic uh, all the parts for roll cage get removed as well And then there's the obligatory amount of cleanup with all those parts. Uh, it's a little bit of flash on some of these parts. Uh, where it's a little bit heavier, kind of use a combination of uh, some scraping with a scalpel blade, uh, UMP sanding sponge. Uh, I've also been using the files a lot on this build because uh, I found with, with the Hasegawa plastic, the files actually seem to uh kind of deal with any attachment points a lot quicker than uh, some of the sanders uh it's quite a i know it's quite a brittle plastic actually it's quite surprising so particularly for all the kind of the, the edges and stuff you want to get rid of those obvious seam lines they are quite pronounced and there's a little bit of flash on these parts but the files will deal with them very very quickly I will, of course, go back over them with a sander just to try and improve the look of those uh, filed areas because uh, you don't want any obvious kind of deep gouges that, that a file can leave. So the interior tub is also going to be predominantly in body color. Once again, just removing it from the sprue. And once again, that'll be cleaned up. Now, the body itself needs a little bit of cleanup. There is a distinctive seam line running kind of 
front to back on this kit. Uh, so I'm using basically a black Sharpie just to highlight that seam. Uh, so the plastic's white glossy. It's quite hard to see the seam lines. Uh, so sometimes it's worth doing this to make them a little bit more obvious. And of course, the the black Sharpie uh, will give you some obvious kind of uh, reveals of, of when the seam line is completely removed. Well, basically, we're just working our way across the seam using UMP sanders. I think this is a 240 sander thinny stick. It's certainly one of my preferred go to ones. Uh, incredibly durable as well, actually. Uh, I've been using the same sander for many, many months and has stood the test of time. Now, it's a little bit intricate getting in around the bumpers, uh, but once you get that done, there's some very easy seam lines to remove along the bonnet. They extend a little bit up the A-pillar, but they're not as obvious. And then across the roof line as well, there is quite an obvious seam line. So obviously progressing along, gentle sanding, let the sander do the work. Constantly checking, using your finger to rub across it. Uh, you can also use a nail as well. That's quite a good way to reveal whether a seam is still there or not. But as you can see, we've pretty much cleaned up all this body and we're just going to run over with a UMP uh, sanding sponge. This is a relatively used one, so not quite as coarse as it was when brand new. Uh, and it's a good way just to knock back any of the deeper scratches from, from the previous sander. But once again, it's all about kind of letting the sander do the work. And yeah, that body's uh, beginning to look nice and clean. So I thought the, the panel lines were a little bit shallow. Uh, the 2K can have a habit of kind of filling them up and taking away the sharpness of them. So you can just use a Tamiya Scriber. In this case, I'm using the 0.23 mil Scriber, I think. I think it's that one. Uh, we're using one, that one just basically to expose the, the, the door shut lines, uh, the bonnet gap, etc. Uh, just to give them a little bit more depth. It'll make them easier to hold a wash as well. Uh, and once you're complete, just run over the body with a UMP buffer. So in order to paint the roll cage, the roll cage is going to be in body color, uh, which is the 555 Rally Monte Carlo Blue. Uh, for the roll cage, a little bit easier to do it when it's assembled. Uh, so basically, I'm just mocking it up, not gluing it into the bot into the interior tub at this stage, just placing it in there uh, to use it as a guide, so I can glue in the transverse pieces. Now, this is one of these three or four handed jobs. Uh, sadly, I've got only two hands, so a little bit of manipulation, a little bit of playing about. Get it just about to the right point, and then you can attach the glue points using some Tamiya Extra Thin. And my head got in the way as well. And then the same for that upper lateral piece as well at the front. And that's basically it for the roll cage. Uh, give that plenty of time to set. Once it's sat in there for a few minutes, that'll be nicely set and easier to paint. Of course, you're not gluing it into the tub at this stage. Uh, that'll come much later on. But as you can see, we've ended up with an assembled roll cage. So there's one addition for the body. Uh, so that's the addition of a roof vent. Uh, so the holes for that were drilled out a little bit earlier. Uh, so it's just a case of locating where that panel goes and just run some Tamiya Extra Thin around it. And the capillary action will just pull that into uh, the gap between the parts.
And that is uh, pretty much it for the body. There is almost nothing left to do on the body apart from get it finally prepped for prime, which in this case is just washing it over with some UMP airbrush cleaner, uh, drying it off and blowing off any remaining dust with some air from the airbrush. And then we can get into the big job of priming everything. Uh, so pretty much everything is going to get about three coats of UMP grey primer. Uh, so as I said earlier on, there's obviously there's a lot of parts that are going to get painted blue. Uh, so the roll cage, the chassis, just building up a nice kind of series of coats on these parts. I think this was the first coat on the chassis. As you can see, the paint's gone down very, very well. Good coverage from that first coat. But that'll get set aside for a few minutes to dry. And once it's touch dry, we can come back and do the second coat. Interior tub gets exactly the same treatment. And then, of course, finally, we can get on to doing the body. And getting a couple of coats, well, three coats of primer down onto this. So let's stick some music and let's speed it up and get through the primer stage. So with the primer stage now complete, that can be set aside for 24 hours and we can get on to adding the Zero Paints Rally Monte Carlo Blue. Uh, so as I said, there's, there's plenty of little bits and pieces that also get done in the body colour. Uh, that's along with the roll cage, uh, the chassis interior tub and of course the body. So one of the things with zero paints, historically they've had an issue with being particularly hot paints, uh, but it's still good practice, certainly for a lacquer anyway, but especially with zero paints, uh, it's a case of you need to do a very, very light coats. So as you can see, I'm just doing very, very light passes just to get that initial kind of buildup of coats uh, and multiple light coats will always produce a more superior finish anyway uh certainly using zero paints they will and you make sure you don't have any issues with the basically the lacquer that's used to thin them uh, attacking the plastic in any way so as you can see the body itself uh that primer is dried out perfectly well no blemishes uh no issues whatsoever so we get straight into the body color Uh, so I'd like to start off doing the arches, then work my way down each side of the kit, uh, front and rear bumpers, uh, roof bonnet and tailgate. But also making sure I get into all those kind of awkward angles, uh, it's particularly the case for a front bumper, because uh, there's some nice little angles in there. So as you can see, we've gotten to the end of the first coat. Uh, it's looking quite patchy at this stage, but don't worry. We'll build that up over the course of, I think I did five coats in the end on this kit. So as this is literally just a case of painting some blue paint, uh, once again, I'll go back to a little bit of music. So sit back and watch as I speed up the footage and fly through these five coats.
So as you can see, I've now got that beautiful deep Subaru Blue. Uh, five coats in. Once that's been left to cure for 24 hours, uh, it's time to move on to the deckling stage. So as said in the intro and in the inbox review, I'm going to be using museum collection decals for this kit. Uh, for the 555 scheme for the 93 New Zealand rally. So, decals are a usual process. Uh, museum collection I have found can be quite resilient to decal solutions, uh, but with a little bit of heat and working your way up to the strongest decal solution, uh, they do eventually settle in quite well. Uh, so off screen, I've got some hot water well, warm water. Uh, that'll be used to release the decal from the backing film. Uh, and I've also got my decal solutions just out of shot as well. And a couple of brushes and a couple of silicon brushes as well to help manipulate and move those decals around. So it's a case of let them sit in the water for about 10 seconds. And then they will eventually just slide off the backing sheet like so. And it's a case of just making sure you've got it in exactly the right position. Using your reference pictures, using the instructions, uh, whatever you need to basically get those decals in exactly the right place. Of course, even with this first decal down, it gives you an impression of that beautiful contrast between the blue and the yellow, that very... Uh, Nostalgic Subaru 555 scheme from the mid 90s. So once the decal is in place, and uh, just using a cotton bull, cotton, whew, can't even speak, a cotton bud, uh, just to squeeze out any excess liquid. Uh, so at this stage, there's no decal solutions down, it's just water at this stage. Once the decal's in place and uh, settled down with no excess water, I'm using some of the decal solutions just to help soften those decals a little bit and force them to conform to any any uh, surface indentations or any cotton you know any complex curves there's not a huge amount on the subaru it is uh, a little bit more straightforward a fairly kind of flat-sided flat bonneted car so these decals do go down pretty okay on flat surfaces like this So once again, I've speeded up the footage because uh, there's nothing particularly different or unique about these decals. Uh, it's just a case of working way through them and get them all down. So let's play a little bit of background music and watch the progress.
once the decals are down and cured uh can go to a black panel line wash uh, in this case i'm using a an ammo uh mig black panel wash uh just to run a little bit of panel liner into uh the door gaps bonnet gaps and boot gaps uh, and that just adds a little bit of necessary contrast uh it's quite subtle against the really dark blue paint anyway uh but it is there and it does add a little bit of contrast just in around those panel lines that i deepened a little bit earlier so i'm just using a liner brush uh, which picks up quite a good amount of material just touching it to the panel line and that will flow via capillary action into those gaps just slowly working my way through Make sure it fills all those gaps. And once that's had a little bit of time to cure, uh, just use a clean piece of uh, workshop roll uh, with a little bit of Windsor and Newton Sansador. Uh, that's an odorless mineral spirits. Uh, if you need it, just clean off any excess uh, or any tide marks from where the brush has touched the surface. So it's a good idea, <clears throat> excuse me, once you've done that, just to have a good look around the kit and make sure you've not missed any spots because the next stage is basically going to seal everything in with 2K. Uh, so keep on checking, check every gap you've done and make sure you have no unsightly little tide marks left from the wash. So once you're happy with all that, leave that aside to cure for probably about 24 hours, it'll be fine. And then we can come back and get ready for the 2K stage. So just giving the kit a quick rub over with an anti-static brush. And then in this case, I'm going to use Pro Range 2K, uh, which has been mixed in a two to one ratio. So the first coat of 2K, of course, is the tack coat. Uh, so in this case, what you're looking for is kind of a shiny pebbly dash type surface as i like to look at so it's not it's not quite a thick clear coat uh, it's got a little bit of shine to it but it's obviously not self-leveled and cleared so really all you're aiming for is a coat that will give the subsequent layers something to adhere to because 2k once it's begun to harden is incredibly sticky so i'm just going to work my way around the body and lay down a nice coat of 2K as a tack coat. So once again, I'm speeding up the footage just because no one wants to sit there and just watch me airbrushing. So as you can see, we're just working our way through, making sure we get a nice tack coat down. As you can see, it's, it's shiny, but it's not a proper clear coat at this stage. So once I'm happy with this stage, I can set that to one side for about 10 to 15 minutes and then come back to do the second coat. So separately off screen, uh, there's the insert for the rear tailgate. That's also get 2 k The second coat, of course, is the first proper clear coat. Uh, so you're trying to lay down a little bit more material. Obviously not too much so that it runs, but obviously you want enough so that it will allow the clear to self-level. Now, in this case, my 2K is a little bit old. Uh, I think the activator is not quite as healthy as it should be. Uh, so I don't quite get the self-leveling that I really want. But how's ever, it's what I've gone with. So that's sat aside for another 10 or 15 minutes. And now we're coming back for coat number three. So as you can see, we've already got that really shiny coat. But it's not as perfect as I want. It's not as perfect as I'd get with a fresh set of 2K. Uh, or even more so, the kind of clear coat you get from Gravity. Pro range is not quite as good. It's well up there. It's definitely good value for money. Produces very good results. Uh, I think Gravity is just a little bit better though. But in this case, it's pro range and it's a little bit old. So it's not quite the perfect finish. But I think it's good enough for what I need. 
a little bit of micro mesh flattening later on and some polishing should sort out any of the the surface issues that i can see so on this third and final coat you're trying to make sure you have no orange peel no blemishes no runs uh, to keep checking your work keep using your lights as a way to check how good the surface looks uh, and then slowly work your way around the kit in that same methodical approach make sure you get all the nooks and crannies that you need make sure you get all the edges done as well uh, particularly if you have any decals that wrap over the edges in this case i don't on the kit but if you do you want to make sure you get plenty of clear coat around those edges because that'll make sure that, that curing process doesn't lift the decal from the surface because that can happen So as previously said, uh, kind of work one side to one side, both bumpers, tailgate, roof, and bonnet. So as you can see, I'm just working the material down, making sure I get a good amount of material. It will self-level. Uh, it, it is liquid in the curing process. It will level slowly during the curing process. But as I said, because this 2K is a little bit old, it's not quite coming out as perfect as I want it. But we can fix that later on. But ultimately, once we get this final coat down, uh, this can be left aside for at least three to four days. In reality, it's going to be left for a lot longer because uh, this kit was put away for a little while while some other projects were ongoing. So that 2K will be well cured by the time we come back to it. But as you can see, we have got a very good clear coat down. Not quite as leveled as I'd like it. But that's the consequence of the activator. But I'm reasonably happy with that. Uh, and that pretty much brings a conclusion to part one of this video build. So as you can see, a couple more passes. just to make sure I get enough liquid down that it will self-level. And yeah, I'm beginning to uh, think that's reasonably okay. There we go. That's part one uh, completed. So we've got kind of everything up to the clear coat. Uh, and a lot of the kind of chassis and interior tub and roll cage painted as well because uh, it's easier to do it all when when you're painting the, the kind of body color anyway so uh i quite like the kit it's a bit dated a little bit of flash it's quite simple but uh you know there's no other choices out there really for a legacy rally car uh but it's gone together okay so far uh this time round reasonably impressed with museum collections decals they've gone down pretty well uh, the paint from zero was spot on color looks really good to my eye paint wise it went down well i uh, didn't suffer any of the issues that zero are sometimes notorious for uh, the 2k is probably the only bit that's not been spot on uh, i guess because i ran out of gravity Still had a lot of pro range left. Decided, let's see how the pro range performs, and it's just not quite self leveled enough. Uh, it's it needs a little bit of work, which probably get to in in probably part three when we kind of flat and polish the body work. So hopefully that'll bring it bring it up a little bit better. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's very glossy. There's not much dust in it. There's no runs. It's just a little bit of uh, not quite orange peel, more just where I think the accelerator is, because is, it because it was a reasonably old set, the the two K hardener accelerator uh, activator, whatever you want to call it, uh, has probably been open for too long and has already started to go off basically. Uh, so yeah, so that was the end of that batch of two K. The last time I use it, I did end up binning a lot, but that's kind of what you get with pro range because you get such a large bottle of it uh it's very hard to get through it all uh but yeah so that's probably the only thing that's gone a little bit wrong 
but not not in a bad way and nothing that stops me with the build so yeah so there we go so part one of course is done part two will focus probably on the running gear interior get that up to speed and then we'll probably put part three is the polishing stage the you know the kind of final final assembly external bits putting it all together uh and then that'll be the video build series complete so it's going to be a three-parter uh, i think that's pretty sure uh so yeah so without further ado thank you to everyone who's watched so far uh don't forget to like the video and of course if you're not a subscriber don't forget to subscribe and tick the bell notification to make sure you get notified particularly when part two comes out so you'll know about it straight away so thank you all for watching and uh we'll see you very very soon in the next part of this video thank you and bye bye